want to hear something dumb? I mean, really dumb. Like dumber than what you would usually think would be dumb on this program. Alex Highsmith recorded 14 and a half sacks in 2022, ranking sixth in the National Football League, four of them behind Nick Bosa of the 49ers, who was the league leader and the defensive player of the year. Highsmith also had five forced fumbles. All AFC, all these honors, everything else here. And, and okay, this is going to be dumb. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates in the same spot that you found this. And I hope you check those out as well. The Steelers OTAs wrapped up yesterday on the south side. No real significant news coming out of uh, any of these three sessions. Some guys at the first team that maybe you didn't think were going to be there, but mostly just because Mike Tomlin doesn't like putting rookies in those roles, and even that's not news. No surprises, no injuries, and that's all good. There also was no real significant talk about a Highsmith extension, which is probably the one extension that's kind of sitting out there to be discussed over the course of the summer. I am way more ambivalent about a Highsmith extension than I feel I should be. And let me please try to explain this within a context that hopefully convinces you that I really like the player and I really, really like the person. I just hope that the Steelers haven't made up their minds that he's in a class with some of the company that he's keeping statistically. And I know that sounds really unfair, but look, however often you see San Francisco play football, You've seen Bosa. You've seen the impact, the overall impact, the consistent impact that he has on a football game. He's a wrecker. He's chaos. He's a destruction crew when he's really on top of it. That's not Highsmith. Highsmith will accumulate the numbers. He'll accumulate them honestly. He'll more often than not, push his way past the blocker. He'll use more brute force, a good, strong initial push, although he's also got some moves, particularly to the inside. And all of that is praiseworthy. But what I don't see from Highsmith is that game after game, wow, you can't take your eyes off of this guy, which is what you see with these other players, the Bosas, the TJ Watts, and so forth. And my concern here is that Omar Khan, because you know he'd be the one handling this, would overpay because you like this player, you really value edge rushers, of course, always in Pittsburgh. The scheme that you're running defensively demands that you get elite edge rushing play, but you don't have to overdo it. If I'm looking at Highsmith's figures and I'm looking at comparables around the league, I'm seeing a contract that you could set up that would put him in the range of around 13 or 14 million a year. And without boring you with all the other salaries of everybody else that's out there, that would have him at about four or five million, maybe a little bit more, less than what these elite guys are getting. And I can live with that because in football, of course, you can cut players, you can find ways to finagle the amount of guaranteed money that you're including and everything else. I like this player, I like him a lot. He's a good player, he's occasionally a very good player. He is not a great player. And can I say that in a positive context? I'm trying. I'm trying. Here, I'll try it another way. He is a great dude who knows and who will tell you himself that he's got room to be better. He said so this week.
Yeah, um, you know, I was just watching my game film throughout the offseason. Um, I, I played far from my best ball. Um, I have so much left in it, so much more in me than I did last year. There were some games where I wasn't producing like I should. And, um, honestly, you know, there's, I feel like I can play to a whole other level a lot better. So I'm just going to have to prove that this year. Um, so just continue to build on what I did last year. And so I know I can be way better than I was last year. This is the great unspoken in all of this. And that is that when TJ plays, Highsmith's performance goes through the roof by his own standards. And when TJ doesn't play, Highsmith's just a guy. Now, you can play devil's advocate here with me and say, okay, well, of course, they're going to pay more attention to Highsmith when TJ isn't there. And Malik Reed's the other guy. Yeah, except that we didn't see that. I didn't see that. I didn't see teams doing gimmick things gang up on number 56. I didn't. I didn't. What I saw was a player who just didn't get anywhere near the amount of uh, distraction that TJ provides just by existing. Like TJ can just go stand on the field and freak teams out at this point. And as a result, he was just neutralized. You would go an entire game without really noticing him other than a handful of routine run tackles. That's going to have to change if he's going to be an elite guy. But the chronology of what we're talking about here today is that the contract would come beforehand, and I'm not so sure that it has to. If the Steelers can get a nice deal financially, go ahead and get it done. If they can't, he can be franchised the following year. If you really, really like him, yeah, that's going to run you a $20 million tab, but it's just one year. It's just one year. Something to think about here. I, I really, really hope that I got the general point across that I like the player. I'm not knocking him. When we come back, J1Q. Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG is a personal injury law firm in Western Pennsylvania that represents people hurt in car accidents or who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice. When the attorneys at LGKG make you a promise, they keep it. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG's been AV rated, the highest rating a law firm can receive, and they've been designated super lawyers. That's actually a thing for over 15 years. It's a rare combination. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them by visiting lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. LGKG. Today's J1Q comes from Jack Cleary, who says, DK, what are your thoughts on Broderick Jones, week one of OTAs? I don't think Broderick should be a day one starter. We have multiple top-of-the-line elite edge rushers coming to town early, who Dan Moore is known for shutting down. And we know how rookie tackles can struggle early on. Aside from what's best for Broderick's development I think what's best for the team is to let Moore start for at least the first few weeks. What are your thoughts? Jack, I remained impressed with Jones through OTAs, in particular the way he carried himself around the other veteran offensive linemen, including Moore over to his right, Dotson to his left. And yes, he's got a locker stall right between the two of them. He kept to himself when they were being questioned. When he was approached, he stood and held his own on his uh, on his own outlook for OTAs and beyond, showing respect for everybody around him, and at the same time, displaying confidence in himself. That's a wonderful start. It really is. There isn't a whole lot to tell you about him on the field. I hate to keep repeating this for everybody, but for anyone who's new, it's uh, there's not a whole lot that happens at OTAs that involves line play where you can go, "Wow, this individual really stood out." It just it just doesn't work like that. But the next negative syllable that I hear about Jones in a football context will be the first. He is exactly who you'd hope he'd be. 
Now, to your other point, and it's a good one, the Steelers are opening up the 2023 regular season with our friend Nick Bosa, who I referenced in the opening segment. And that's going to be a big old challenge. And then the week after that, it's Miles Garrett. Now, when we say, actually, when you say, Jack, that Moore has been effective against these types of guys, it has to be Garrett that you're referring to. He's risen up to the challenge of facing Garrett not once, but twice. I don't know what percentage of the credit to give to Moore because I thought Garrett was so awful in both of those games. But then you know what? A good offensive lineman will do that to you. He'll render you moot. How many times did we see even James Harrison would run into somebody who would just engulf him? Remember him against Andrew Whitworth? Just like he disappeared. And you would just never think that about Debo. But it happened. And it happens. So might that be something that goes into Mike Tomlin's mind? Might that be something that they confer with Pat Meyer on and say, listen, get Jones up to speed, keep doing what you got to do, but we're going to go with Moore here in these first couple of games. And you know what? If Moore were to do it again and hold his own and look like he's the next guy or whatever, maybe you engineer a trade, maybe you figure something else out. But everyone would win in that case, except really for Jones, who would miss out on the opportunity early on to have his own tests. That's going to be interesting to see. And it's one of the few occasions, incidentally, where the makeup of the schedule, the timing of the schedule can be legitimately relevant. Good stuff. Good stuff. I appreciate that question. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Steelers. And we'll do another one of these. Hear this one out. Tuesday. There won't be a show on Memorial Day. Hope everyone has a wonderful and safe weekend. Be safe, people. 